With less than three weeks left in the legislative session, we are talking about a controversial proposal to loosen recent police reform laws in the state of Washington. And after a morning with snow in some areas, what does our weather have coming up for us as we move into this week? Stay right here. I'll get you and your family all prepared for the week ahead. And we are tracking developing news tonight as former President Trump prepares for the courtroom, the first former president in American history to face criminal charges. Now, Cap KVU Local News at 5. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Alyssa Warner. Today, a jury in Snohomish County convicted a 51-year-old Kennewick man of killing an Everett police officer just over a year ago. The Everett Daily Herald reports Officer Dan Rocha was on patrol late last March when he saw Richard Rotter moving guns between two cars in the parking lot of a Starbucks. Now, Rotter was already a convicted felon at the time and he was not allowed to have guns. Police body camera video shows they talked for several minutes, but then when Rocha went to arrest Rotter, Rotter shot the officer several times, then ran over him while leaving the scene. Rotter crashed a few blocks away. The jury found him guilty of aggravated first degree murder. He is now sent for sentencing two weeks from today. Washington state sheriffs and police chiefs have been vocal in supporting a bill that would give law enforcement more discretion when it comes to vehicle pursuits. Cap KVU's Emily Goodell spoke to local law enforcement today about whether they could use new technology to avoid police chases entirely. I spoke to officials with both the Yakima County and Kittitas County Sheriff's offices. They say that sometimes the risk of letting a suspect go is higher than the risk of engaging in a pursuit. They say sometimes that's the case when they suspect someone's committed a violent crime and might do it again if not taken into custody immediately. Or they're not sure who's sitting in the driver's seat. They say that's the reason why, although flock cameras that track license plates in real time are useful, they're not a replacement for vehicle pursuits. The flock cameras don't always identify who's behind the wheel. Matter of fact, uh, we often cannot tell who's behind the wheel. So what does that take? It's personal contact with a deputy. Law enforcement officials say the bill that's currently making its way through the legislature regarding vehicle pursuits might give them a little bit more leeway in making those decisions about which vehicles to pursue. But they say it's not going quite far enough in their opinion. We'll have more on that on our website, yaktrynews.com. Reporting Emily Goodell, Cap KVU, Local News. Thanks, Emily. And as Emily mentioned, that bill is working its way through the legislature, but it's not yet scheduled for a final vote. And the end of the 2023 legislative session is coming up this month. State lawmakers have until April 12th, which is next Wednesday, to finish voting on proposals. The session ends on April 23rd. Now let's talk weather. It is officially the month of April, but it sure didn't look like it this morning. Jeff Jacobs is here. Big changes we're talking about I today. don't remember saying April snow showers no bring May flowers so something's kind of off right <laughs> well welcome to April so anything can happen that's kind of how this whole uh, season of winter's mm -hmm. been since well September and it keeps going let's jump outside my friends and look at our legend sky cam network as we look over Richland there towards uh, Badger Mountain yeah we started with snow showers hitting quite a bit of our area and then the sunshine came out and now we've got a little bit of overcast conditions so just roll the dice let's see what's coming up this week our sky watch radar is showing some activity uh, a little to the north uh, some showers and lightning activity going through uh, the Connell area and uh, in all the way uh, up there around the Moses Lake area. Spots of clouds and showers, and we're going to see a little bit more of that. Let's look at what we can expect over the next 24 hours. The temperature is dipping down, especially as we get closer to sunrise tomorrow morning, just below freezing and then uh, climbing back up. We do have warmer temperatures, but we also do have a chance of some scattered rain showers coming up this week. I'll let you know more coming up in the full forecast. Thanks, Jeff. A Tri-Cities woman was minutes away from being scammed out of her life savings, but thanks to a quick thinking gas station employee tonight, she is sharing her story and warning others. Maddie, this is a story mm -hmm. that we've heard a lot about people losing everything mm -hmm. over and over. You know, and Alyssa, we've heard a lot about this from the federal government, from mm -hmm. our local law enforcement telling us, warning us. This is really the first time somebody local has come forward saying this happened to me and it's happening right here in the Tri-Cities and now she wants to make sure others do not fall victim. So it was a couple of weeks ago when 80 year old Christine Altena saw this message on her iPad. It was telling her to contact the number so she could be let back into her Apple account and unfreeze her iPad. 
iPad. From there, she says she was essentially held hostage over the phone for hours by people demanding she drain her bank accounts and transfer the money to them. He said, okay, well, the other way we can do it, he says, we can go to a Bitcoin machine. There's one on clear water at a Shell station. I, you know, gave me the address, and he said, and you can we'll get you a virtual wallet. Now, luckily, when she went inside and tried to work that Bitcoin machine, Christine was stopped in her tracks. Her life savings remained secure. But now the big question is, did they actually have her Apple ID? No, they didn't have any information. They didn't even have her social security number. Complete scam. It was one of those shady websites where pop-ups come up warning oh. you of this and the Apple insignia was all there. So she just was confused and scared and well, yeah. uh, fight or flight <laughs> takes over. So we're so glad uh, that her funds are where they should be yes. safely tucked away. <laughs> and coming up on Cap KB Local News at six o'clock, we'll tell you who intervened and the red flags Christine wish she had recognized. And if you or a loved one has been scammed, there's a national elder fraud hotline. It can be reached by the number on your screen. All right, thank you so yeah, much. Absolutely. <laughs> now we continue to track developing news tonight after a grand jury in New York decided decided to move forward with criminal charges against former President Donald Trump. Trump is expected in court in Manhattan tomorrow to formally hear those charges. He could enter a plea at that time. Today, he made the trip from Mar-a-Lago in Florida up to the Big Apple. Trump is facing charges of falsifying business records after an investigation into payments made to a porn actor and a former Playboy model. Now, we will be continuing to track that tomorrow morning on Good Morning Northwest as it happens. An Idaho mom accused of killing her two children in a case that gained nationwide attention is now having her day in court. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has a look at what to expect in the coming weeks as Lori Vallow Daybell fights the charges against her. This morning in Idaho, jury selection begins in the trial that will determine if Lori Vallow Daybell killed her two children, seven-year-old JJ and 17-year-old Ty Lee. A separate trial will also be held for her husband, Chad Daybell, also accused in their murders. They're also both charged in the death of Daybell's late wife. What we can expect to see, at least from the defense, is some sort of effort to make Lori Vallow Daybell look like she's insane that she's suffering from delusions, she's suffering from mental illness, and that she didn't know what she was doing. The grandparents of Vallow's children reported them missing in 2019 after Vallow privately married Daybell in Hawaii and joined his religious group. Can you tell me where your kids are, Jan and Lori? In divorce papers, Vallow's ex-husband said Lori believed she was a godlike figure who called the children zombies and said she was sent to usher in the apocalypse. Ever since she's been involved in this doomsday cult, that is not the same Laurie that we knew for 13 years. After nine months of searching, the children were found in a shallow grave on their stepfather's property. Prosecutors say while carrying out their doomsday plot, Lori and Chad also planned to collect his late wife's life insurance money. If Lori is convicted, we'd expect the maximum possible penalty that the court can give, which would be life in prison without parole. While pleading not guilty, Vallow's defense team has insisted she has an alibi. The trial could take up to three months. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. Now, Vallow Daybell is also facing charges in Arizona. This is related to the death of her previous husband in 2019. And that case is on hold while the Idaho court proceedings play out. We have a consumer alert tonight. OPEC says it's going to cut oil production in a surprise move. Russia is also extending its oil production cuts, which means the global supply is going to drop by a total of about a million barrels per day. The problem, according to OPEC, is that oil was down to about $70 per barrel from the highs of 120 that we saw last year. They want to make sure the price doesn't continue to drop. But as we know, that's bad news for drivers because oil prices have a very big impact on what we pay for gasoline and diesel. And even at $70 a barrel here in Washington, we were paying close to $4 per gallon. Melissa Rainey has a look at what to expect now for summer road trips. With oil prices already rising, this impact could soon be felt by Americans at the pump. On Monday, the national average for a tank of regular gas came in at just under $3.51 a gallon according to AAA. Whenever we see crude oil rise, nine times out of 10, we're going to see an increase in gas prices. That can be anywhere between three cents to 10 cents. 
So what does this mean for those planning to gas up and hit the road this spring break and summer? It's about gassing up um, and monitoring what your gas prices are going to be along your road trip, depending on um, where you're going. Many Americans are hitting the roads to beaches in the south like Georgia and Florida and on the east coast, according to AAA spokesperson Montre Waiters. She predicts there's going to be an even bigger uptick in summer travel and offers a unique tip on having better gas mileage. Get the junk out of your trunk. So the heavier your car is, the more it burns gas. I know when you're traveling, you can't help that, but try and pack smart. I'm Melissa Rainey. As of today, the state of Washington is no longer requiring masks in healthcare facilities, nursing homes, and correctional institutions. You can still choose to wear a mask if you want to. Local governments or individual health care providers can also still require masks. The CDC also still says you have to wear a mask if you test positive for COVID-19. This is a big change that we are just now seeing. Unfortunately, we are back to not social distancing. We're, you know, it's almost normal. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And we're also talking about the winter that started early that seems to not want to give up. And we'll tell you more. There's actually something to look forward to ahead uh, when we look at your full forecast coming up. Some warmer temperatures. So there you go. Definitely worth sticking around for that. And still ahead on CapKV Local News at 5, we're talking about another setback for the seafood industry. Why Dungeness crab may be in short supply. That's next. The last thing you want people thinking about when they're in their golden years is money. We have a new family member living with us, which is my mother-in-law, Kathleen. She has had MS since my husband's been six. We have our caregivers that come into the home and help out with her. She gets showers every day. Walk Cares is a really unique program. As you get older, you're still cared for and you're still valuable. It's just great to know that if you need it, Walk Cares will be there for them. Alien tape is strong enough to hold this fishbowl on a moving car. Just peel and stick and make anything stay in place quick. A wooden shelf, a basket to glass, rugs to the floor, and so much more. Alien tape sticks to brick, pavers, marble, tile, plastic, even leather. Nothing works better. Alien tape secures in seconds, then twist, pull, and rinse to reuse. You're dying to try it. Here's your chance to buy it. Call 1-800-284-4157 or go to tryalientape.com. That's 1-800-284-4157. Hey fans, Eric the Peanut Guy here to tell you that Dust Devils Baseball is back with affordable family fun all season long. Join me at Giza Stadium on Thursday, April 6th for opening night. We'll kick off the new season with our annual magnet schedule giveaway thanks to Tri-Cities Community Health. We conclude the evening with a spectacular post-game fireworks show presented by CEO Energy. And on Saturday, April 8th, come out for more post-game fireworks thanks to Yoke's Fresh Market. For tickets, visit DustDevilsBaseball.com. Dust Devils Baseball, it'll blow you away. Need to refresh your room in your home? Yeah, have you seen this place? Well, right now, you can get a look you love and save big during the home makeover sale at Furniture Row. Find huge savings on every sofa, every dining table, and every bed. Save up to 800 bucks on purple mattress and adjustable base bundles, plus three years no interest financing. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices guaranteed. I love it. The home makeover sale, on now at Furniture Row. It's one of the most awesome sights in the Pacific Northwest. It's hard to decide which direction to look at. Uh, it's a very humbling experience. And it's just a short drive from the Tri-Cities. You appreciate what we've been given. Fly the Northwest over Palouse Falls, Tuesday on Camp KV Local News at 6. Next ET. I'm excited about it. We're with Country Music's Finest for all the action in Austin. ET, see you at the CMT Music Awards. Next ET. Tonight at 7 on Camp KV. Cap gave you first alert weather, helping keep you and your family safe. Welcome back. Between now and the 14th of April, some local libraries are taking part in a community-based art display. This is called the Clothesline Project. It's meant to be a reminder of how often violence occurs and the impact that abuse has on a victim, their family, and the community. The display shows shirts designed by victims and survivors of violence illustrating their stories. Some of the t-shirts have some of the things that they had to go through and how it affected them and and then there's others that have survivor stories saying that they got past the problems with help with a counselor or with an advocate that was help, able to go to court with them to deal with all of, all of the crime that happened. 
Another campaign that's coinciding with the clothesline project is the Little Hearts Project. Wooden figurines of 367 children are displayed at the Mid-Columbia Library on Union Street in Kennewick. They represent each of the children who were interviewed for child abuse cases at Kids Haven. You can find all of the libraries participating in these projects on our website, yaktrynews.com. A health alert tonight. The FDA is now saying the factory that makes eye drops linked to a deadly outbreak of eye infections failed to follow safety protocols. The factory that makes EzraCare artificial tears is in India. The FDA says the process there lacked assurance of sterility, which is key when it comes to something you're putting in your eyes. The recalled EzraCare artificial tears product is part of an outbreak of a rare and drug resistant bacteria, which had never before been reported in the United States. Some patients lost their vision. Some like the patient you see here lost an eye. Several died. Tonight, we're talking about another setback for West Coast seafood. After a delayed start to the Dungeness crab season that meant missing the winter holidays, California is now cutting their harvest short. Their season will end on April 15th. California's Department of Fish and Wildlife says this change is to protect humpback whales from getting tangled in the fishing gear. But some crabbers say the constant upheaval is damaging their entire industry. Keeps you on a hamster wheel a little bit. The weather is worse and the, the amount of time we have to, to go fish before the crab go on the clutch is shortened. But then when you get that cut off, it's kind of like, why did I waste all that time and money? Zachary Hassan says losing a month from the season means he'll be on a shoestring budget for the rest of the year. And Dungeness crab isn't the only part of the fishing industry seeing setbacks. Alaska, you may remember, simply canceled two crab harvests this season because they were concerned about stock. Now, Cap Cave View First Alert Weather with Jeff Jacobs. Well, welcome to April. And what are we going to get? Like I said a little bit earlier in the show, we're just going to roll the dice and see because, yeah, this winter that started early this year just does not want to seem to let go with the uh, scattered snow showers we had this morning and then blue sky. And what's going to happen tonight? Well, let's look, look at what's impacting you. Yeah, scattered rain expected at times throughout this week. Clearing tonight, uh, so we'll see the temperatures dip down a little bit and then warming as we get towards the weekend and even further into the beginning of next week. So there is some good news. There is some silver lining on these gray clouds right now as we we look at our uh, active radar. We do see this system kind of coming through uh, Othello and Connell with the uh, scattered rain showers, even some uh, thunder and lightning in some areas. But overall, we will see see things start to clear out as we move into this week. Let's put our future cast into motion. We'll see where we're at right now at five o'clock on a Monday. We see some clearing starting uh, this evening, but still scattered rain showers expected to hit in the higher elevations into Tuesday. A little bit more clearing from Ellensburg, Yakima, all the way down the valley towards the Tri Cities. Wednesday, uh, getting even even more clear out there. So yes, we will see some more sunshine, but we'll still have to deal with some clouds here and there. Temperatures right now, right around 50 degrees for the most part. You get along the foothills of the blues, much cooler temperatures as Walla Walla Milton Free Water in the upper 30s. Ellensburg seeing 46 right now and Tri-Cities at uh, 49 while Yakima is at 51. Temperature trend, yeah, we're still a little bit below what our average is. Right now we should be just above 60 degrees. 63 is our average for today. And uh, we'll see us gradually get there and a little bit above our average. So there's some good news as uh, we look towards the end of this week and into the weekend. Wind speeds right now, uh, we see anywhere from 8 miles per hour being reported right now in the Tri-Cities to 15 miles per hour in Yakima. 28 for Toppenish, so definitely a breeze coming down through the valley there. Hermiston at 10 miles per hour. Here's a wind outlook as well as we will work through this week. Just a little bump as we get to Friday. Not too crazy, about 15 mile per hour uh, breeze there and then kind of settling down as we head into the weekend, allowing some warmer temperatures to come in. Let's look at our countdown. Dust Devils opener is three days from now. Baseball season. But wow, crazy NFL draft on ABC is already coming up in 24 days. We thought we just had the Super Bowl and Easter is just uh, six days away there. So it's all coming up as we move into uh, April here and weather wise. Yeah, we definitely have a lot more uh, coming up tonight. We're looking at chilly conditions and clear skies as uh, it definitely opens up with temperatures in the upper 20s to lower 30s. 27 for Yakima, 31 for the uh, Tri-Cities tonight. And tomorrow, cool, a little more sunshine. We shouldn't have to deal with that white stuff tomorrow morning. Temperatures in the uh, upper 40s to lower 50s. We're looking at 53 for Yakima, 55 for the Tri-Cities, uh, as well as uh, Hermiston. Seven-day forecast. 
All right, Tri-Cities, we're looking as we uh, shoot towards Easter. 55 tomorrow, some clouds on Thursday, a chance of a scattered shower here or there. Sunday is going to be a great day to get out there and find those Easter eggs. 70 degrees on Sunday. Yakima, similar condition, but slightly cooler. We got to get through that Thursday of a possible shower here or there and temperatures in the 50s. Then we start gradually going up a little bit and getting up to the mid 60s by Sunday and 70 degrees by Monday. So don't take my word for it, but take my word for it. This might be the end of winter <laughs> for a little while. All right, Alyssa. We'll hold you to that. Thanks, Jeff. WC Tri-Cities unveiled a new landmark this morning. It's a replica of the Cougar statue on the Pullman campus, commissioned and donated by a WSU alum. He's hoping to bring this statue to each Washington State University campus. WSU Tri-Cities Chancellor Sandra Hayes explained the campus is doing a lot to expand towards meeting the needs of the community focused in energy and energy production. Behind us is the Bioproduct Sciences Engineering Laboratory and just last week we announced that we have a partnership with Sonomish County in sustainable aviation fuel. So a lot of research goes on in that building around bio products, bio natural gas, biodiesel and sustainable aviation fuel. Chancellor Hayes says the university is also hoping to have some more announcements coming up at the end of the month with the Institute for Northwest Energy Futures as they look at how to move into a decarbonized future. Speaking of moving into the future, up next on Cap KVU Local News, we're looking ahead to another small step for mankind and the people who are going to be taking that step. And we have a lot more news to share with you on our mobile app. You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan this QR code, also at the bottom of your screen throughout the show. The code will take you right to our app for news and weather on demand. It's free to download and there's no subscription fee. Portion of Cap KB sponsored by Lord's Health and Trio's Health, making communities healthier. Coming up tomorrow on Good Morning Northwest, we continue to follow former President Trump's indictment as he's expected to be arraigned at a Manhattan courthouse. And Jason Valentine will have your first alert forecast. The good news. U.S. Cellular gives you $500 off any phone when you choose an unlimited evolved plan. So nice. So, friend who always has a broken phone can finally get a new one. It's just a scratch. <laughs> it's broken. Oh. oh. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. Floor scuffs, tears, and nasty scratches. Forget them for good with Ruby Sliders, the chair leg covers that stretch to fit most chairs and make floor marks a thing of the past. Slide it here, slide it there, slide it anywhere. Just slip them on and keep your floors looking like new. They fit any size or shape furniture leg and glide effortlessly. Forget flimsy felt pads and caps that don't fit. Just stretch it on and slide it. Call or click now to get Ruby Sliders for as low as 99 cents with free shipping. With K2 Vision RLE, you can throw away your distance and reading glasses. Plus, you'll never develop a cataract. Schedule a free Zoom consultation with us today. K2 Vision RLE. No glasses, no contacts, no readers. Click at RV Tri-City Superstore has gone mad! With huge discounts on a huge selection of top brand RVs, which means the lowest prices, factory incentives, and rebates. You guys gotta beat the spring rush and get in here now. Shop online and find the floor plan you like, then build it, price it, and click it. Or come to the Pasco Autoplex. From travel trailers to fifth wheels, toy haulers to motorhomes. The huge indoor outdoor RV show is here. Get a better RV and the lowest price guarantee. Only at Click It RV Tri Cities or ClickItRV.com. Be a winner like me and get the Click It RV. Since 1968, Sundown M Ranch has helped over 200,000 patients and families recover from the effects of substance use disorders. I was ashamed, humiliated, and not sure if I could be helped. But I listened and found a completely different way to live by spending time at Sundown. I did not believe there was a way out of the dark hole my life had become. Sundown M Ranch provided a foundation for me to find a new way to live. Sundown M Ranch. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Just three words tell you everything you need to know. They tell you why we employ more than 2,000 workers at our factory in Virginia Beach, and why over 10,000 local steel dealers are putting battery power in the hands of Americans. Not everyone can say that, but we can. Made in America. Real steel. Find yours.
Trending tonight, NASA has just named the four astronauts who will be on the first manned Artemis mission. Reed Weissman, Victor Glover, Christina Koch, and Jeremy Hansen will be the first moon crew in half a century. This is just the beginning, because we're going back to learn to live, to create, to invent, in order to go to Mars and then beyond. So this is mankind, humankind's further quest. Now this crew won't actually land on the moon this time around. They're going to take NASA's Orion capsule to circle the moon and then come right back to Earth. That's scheduled to happen sometime in 2024 or 2025. NASA is hoping to have people on the moon about a year after that. Jeff, it's crazy to me that we are right back here. It's so close now. So close. Is it our second time or is it our first? <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> That's the big conspiracy, right? Is, a, is have we been to the moon really or not? I'm right? going to go with we, we did I, I, it. I'm thinking so, <laughs> but we'll leave that up to the mystery minds out there. Hey, stay close. We'll have a final look at your weather and let you know what exactly is in store for the rest of this week coming up. And still ahead, all eyes are on New York tonight. Former President Trump is preparing to formally hear the charges against him in court tomorrow. World News Tonight has team coverage coming up in about five minutes. Portion of Cap KV sponsored by Lord's Health and Trio's Health, making communities healthier. Coming up tomorrow on Good Morning Northwest, we continue to follow former President Trump's indictment as he's expected to be arraigned at a Manhattan courthouse. And Jason Valentine will have your first alert forecast. The local water experts at Culligan can take care of everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, we do that too. Culligan, here for every water worry. This week, the indictment of former President Donald Trump. New York City increasing security before his arraignment. So what happens next? More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. I'm getting backyard cookout vibes. Inside? Oh, that's the new DQ Backyard Bacon Ranch Signature Stack Burger. Now you can take the backyard anywhere with honey barbecue sauce and house-made Hidden Valley Ranch. You guys are taking this backyard anywhere thing really seriously. Maybe next time you'll take that DQ Backyard Bacon Ranch Signature Stack Burger to, you know, the actual backyard. We need a hose. Only at DQ. Happy tastes good. I was 44, working part-time. It was my first mammogram and they found a few cancerous places in my left breast. I didn't have any symptoms. I didn't feel sick. I didn't have a lump in my breast. I did, there was nothing. I wasn't afraid I was gonna die. My first fear was, how am I gonna tell my daughter? As a result of early detection, I didn't have to do chemotherapy. I just did surgery and radiation. You know, was able to maintain a good quality of life and, and now it's a distant memory. Are you making these money mistakes that will ruin your employees? Act rich, get rich. It's new. It's gross. It's Bitcoin. Crypto, baby! Are you wondering, how am I making money? How am I traveling the world and just living my best life? Well, it's pretty easy, okay? See what I mean? Video, Let's talk about managing your money okay. in real life. Yeah. Mom, get out of here! Thank you. Find a healthier approach to money at Giza. For over 600 different premium cigars, including every cigar rated 95 and higher in the last decade, it's the Educated Cigar. For 115 different fine pipe tobaccos and 55 different briarwood pipes from England, Germany, and Italy, it's the Educated Cigar. For 95 and higher rated wines and White Bluff IPAs, it's the Educated Cigar in Richland. Barney's What's had the story? best dressing room lighting, and they knew that if you lit women well, they would buy anything. <laughs> Next time, Emma Thompson and Mel B. Tomorrow morning at 9 on Cap KVU. We have an update tonight about nine-year-old Emily Wynn, the Tri-Cities golfer who competed at the National Drive, Chip, and Putt Finals in Augusta, Georgia. Emily placed fifth in her division. She had the highest putt score in the group. There were a total of 80 junior golfers made their way from regionals to compete in this national skills competition. And Jeff, this was from a little bit earlier in the winter when we got to watch Emily practice. 
didn't quite look like that this morning. No, no, it'd been hard to uh, be golfing uh, in the white snow out there. But good yeah. news is we don't have any of that really uh, in the forecast coming up. We are going to deal with some clouds. We're going to have some sunshine, some scattered showers by Thursday. But yeah, warmer temperatures are coming up. All right, we're looking forward to that. Cap KV Local News is back tonight. At